Hey everyone, I'm Marshall. And I'm Chris. And I've been wondering, do any of you guys make big lists when it's your birthday coming up or Christmas lists where you put all the big things you want and then the smaller things and then you want your family to go and like choose which items to buy you? Absolutely. I remember when I was a kid, I'd make like this super long list and be like, here mom, can I get these things? And because we didn't have a ton of money, she pretty much knew she couldn't get any of that. But now as I'm older, I realize all those gifts are kind of meaningless compared to what I have now with Jesus. Absolutely. Our big idea for today is that Jesus gives us what no one else can. So we're gonna watch our God story now and learn a little bit more about it. Peace. I know I said I would meet you guys here today, but we're getting the roof redone and we're just gonna have to live with the noise. Hey everyone, it's Alyssa. I'm so excited for today's God story. There's a woman who thinks that she needs some water, but she soon realizes that what she really needs is something even greater, Jesus. That's why today's big idea is Jesus gives us what no one else can. Now today, we're jumping into John chapter four. The Pharisees were growing more and more jealous of Jesus, and Jesus knew he should leave town. So he left Judea to go to Galilee. Now on his way, Jesus needed to travel through Samaria. Now here's the scoop. The Samaritans and the Israelites weren't friends. They were closely related in religion and beliefs, but they just didn't get along because of some of their differences. So Samaria was a place where Israelites would never go. But Jesus went there. He went to a place where Jacob's well was. So Jesus sat down at the well and a woman came to collect water. Now it was around noontime. And so if you think about it, that's when the sun is overhead, it's really hot. And usually people would collect water in the morning when it was cooler. So if this woman was here at noon, it meant that she was probably trying to avoid people. Let's read about the conversation that Jesus had with this woman. A woman from Samaria came to get some water. Jesus said to her, will you give me a drink? His disciples had gone into the town to buy food. The Samaritan woman said to him, you're a Jew. I am a Samaritan woman. How can you ask me for a drink? She said this because Jews don't have anything to do with Samaritans. There are a ton of reasons why Jesus and this woman shouldn't have been talking to each other. In that time, a man and a woman talking to each other would have been scandalous, and the fact that they were then a Jew and a Samaritan definitely made it not cool. Then, Jesus told this woman that she didn't realize who it was that was asking her for water. If she knew, he would give her living water. The woman was confused. She said, sir, you don't even have a bucket to get water with. The well is really deep. How are you gonna get this living water? Let's read Jesus' answer. Everyone who drinks this water will be thirsty again, but anyone who drinks the water I give them will never be thirsty. In fact, the water I give them will become a spring of water in them. It will flow up into eternal life. Okay, what is Jesus talking about? This living water, is it some sort of magic water? No, what Jesus is talking about is the Holy Spirit. When we say yes to Jesus, the Holy Spirit wells up inside of us. The Holy Spirit fills us. This woman still thought that Jesus was talking about actual water. So she said to him, give me this water so I won't have to come to this well anymore. Cause you know, that would be really convenient. Then Jesus seems to change the subject for a second. He says to this woman, go get your husband and come back. And this woman says, I have no husband. Jesus responds, that's true. In fact, you've had five husbands and the man you're living with now isn't even your husband. Jesus didn't say this to shame her, but to show her that he knew everything about her. This woman started to see that there is something special about Jesus because he knew about her life. So this woman asked a tough question of Jesus that the Jews and the Samaritans had been arguing about for a long time. It was about where we should worship. Should we worship in Jerusalem, like the Jews said, or on a mountain, like the Samaritans said? Let's read Jesus' response. A new time is coming. In fact, it is already here. True worshipers will worship the Father in the spirit and in truth. They are the kind of worshipers the Father is looking for. God is spirit. His worshipers must worship him in the spirit and in truth. In other words, it doesn't matter where you worship God. It doesn't matter about the rituals or the religious services done just so. What matters is that you worship God with your whole heart. Then the woman said that she knew the Messiah, the Christ was coming, and when he did, he would explain all of these things. Jesus then said, I am the one you're talking about. 
This is a big deal. Jesus is the Messiah, the Christ, the one that the Jews and the Samaritans had been waiting for. Just after Jesus said that, his disciples came back and they were surprised to see Jesus talking to a woman, but none of them said anything. The woman ran back into town, leaving her water jar because she wanted to tell everyone about Jesus. She said, come and see, come and see. People left town to come and see Jesus. She told them everything he had said to her. And because of this, many people came to believe in Jesus. The Samaritans asked Jesus to stay for two days. He did, and because of this, many more people came to follow him. These people said to the woman, we don't believe just because of what you said. We heard it for ourselves, and we know that this man is the savior of the world. The same is true for us. Jesus gives us what no one else can. He's our savior, our Lord. And when we say yes to following him, the Holy Spirit fills us up. It's this living water that wells up inside us and it fills us like nothing else can. All right, that's all for today. Thanks for putting up with the noise with me and I will catch you guys next time. Quick, turn to the person next to you and discuss the following questions. Whoa! Yeah. <laughs> Question time. Why was it so strange that Jesus spoke to the woman at the well? Jesus told the woman that he could give her living water. What was he talking about? What does that mean for us? So clearly, Jesus isn't gonna be that genie in the bottle making things appear out of midair, but he did give us something better, the Holy Spirit, which is in us. Yeah, he gave us eternal life, and only Jesus can do that. And he didn't choose anything off a list that he think we might want. This is stuff we need. Absolutely. And what Jesus did for us dying on the cross is hard to image in our own mind. But we're gonna watch a story of Terry who actually does something that could kind of put it into a perspective into our own lives. Let's watch this. I'm Terry and I love to play tennis, usually with uh, three other friends, so doubles is a big one. I also love to cycle. Uh, down on the Martin Goodman Trail, all along the bottom of the city. It's a long trail with lots of beautiful scenery, so I really do enjoy that. And I love hanging out with friends, either just going for coffee or having a meal with good friends. I really enjoy that. Years ago, there was a movement called, well, WWJD, and what it stood for was, what would Jesus do? And there was a lot of people who would put the WWJD on their t-shirts, or they would actually have wristbands and they would wear those. I've even seen somebody, some people tattoo it on their wrist or their arm. And oftentimes there were Bible covers with the initials WWJD. And it was just something that made people stop and think and be a reminder of in certain situations, what would Jesus do? So Saturday mornings, my best friend and I would go for brunch and it was pretty much an open door policy with other friends. We usually have an average of maybe at least four, maybe five. Single people, couples, sometimes couples would bring their kids. Just an understanding that Saturday mornings, 10 a.m., you can show up at that point in time and you're welcome to join us for brunch. So one Saturday, one of the friends showed up, Andre, and he simply said that uh, he's going to need a kidney. One was non-functioning and the other one needed to be replaced. My immediate reaction was simply, how do I find out if I'm a match? So he literally just turned to me and said, when are we gonna do this? I just could not believe it. We don't expect that coming from your best friend or anybody else, like you know I was in shock, actually. 
this was a friend in need. And later when people asked me, well, you know, how did you make that decision? And I think back to what would Jesus do? And it made it really simple, because I know Jesus would give his kidney. So we booked the surgical date and we went in for the surgery. He just decided that it would not be a big deal for him and he just did what he had to do to, to help me and I'm very thankful for it, you know. I can tell you one thing, it takes Gus to be gentle and kind and those are the things Terry are. I was told when I did this that recovery would be somewhere between six weeks and three months. And actually, oddly enough, I remember it was almost six weeks to the day when I realized that I was back to myself. Since I got my kidney, things are going great. I mean, I feel like I got a second chance, to be honest, second chance in life, you know? Some friends and family said this seemed to be a big deal. But when I consider all that Jesus has done for me, okay, <laughs> sorry. <laughs> when I consider all that Jesus has done for me and all that he sacrificed for me, it seemed like a simple thing to do. And I just really hope and pray that my friends will see this demonstration of God's love and his kindness towards me that is something that is there for all of us. Question time. What did Terry do for his friend? Do you think you could ever do something like that? Why or why not? What did Jesus do for us? How does Jesus give us something that no one else can? What does that mean for you? Marshall, I'm speechless. Dude. That story is incredible. Yeah. Terry is an incredible guy that did an amazing thing to help his friend. It wasn't just him giving out some food to his friend or giving him a couch to sleep on for the night. Those are really good things, but he risked his life to help his friend. Instantly, he thought of what would Jesus do in this moment? It's crazy. Yeah, I and mean, you can see how much Terry loves Jesus and he wants to take that love and just reflect it onto everybody around him. I know that what would Jesus do bracelets aren't really around anymore, but that is still something we should practice every day. Let's break off into our small groups and see what would Jesus do in our lives today. 